So mental health has obviously been an important issue in recent years, and an organization that's been working in this realm is the Jed Foundation. And today I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Michelle Mullen, Senior Vice President and Chief Design and Impact Officer over there. Thanks so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. So to start off with, uh, can you describe what the Jed Foundation does, the elevator pitch per se? Uh, the Jed Foundation is a national nonprofit that protects the emotional health and prevents suicide amongst our nation's teen and young adults. And uh, the program that we'll be talking a little bit about today is a Jed Campus program, which is a four year partnership um, with schools and universities. It's nationwide, and we provide um, guided assistance through a collaborative process to uh, identify programs, policies, systems, and culture that enhances mental health, substance misuse, and suicide suicide prevention. So I worked in higher ed for 12 years, so this is something I, I care very much about. So it's great to hear an organization like this, especially using data, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly, uh, is definitely part of the, the mission of uh, the Jed Foundation with regards to this. So to start off with, tell us some of the mental health challenges college students face when they're going through their four years or more in uh, higher ed. Yeah, as someone who spent time in higher ed, you know, sometimes and more often it's more than four years. Oh, yeah. um, so <laughs> our college students, um, you know, are struggling with things that are very typical for young adulthood, you know, their identity and figuring out what they're going to do in the future. There's also additional pressures um, related to the competition of social media and comparisons. Um, we have different, you know, stressors here now, like uh, mass shootings. Um, but what we do know about this uh, population is that our young adults are incredibly resilient. And our reports are finding that we can do real things on college campuses to improve mental health and to reduce some of the struggles that they're experiencing. What ways are colleges and universities changing the way they approach treating mental health? Obviously, there's a broad array of ways that uh, colleges are able to do it. There's whether it's the face to face model. I mean, there's so many online institutions nowadays where it's just as important that they're receiving um, resources being available. What are some ways the schools are taking care of this? Yeah, so you know, in doing research on for college student mental health um, for a couple of decades, when we used to ask colleges um, what were their struggles with mental health on campus, they would say, we don't have that. And now that is not the answer. Resoundingly, yeah. every college university yeah. leader is saying, yes, yes, we are acutely aware that our students need help. And one of the things that um, is changing is that, you know, for a very long time, we centered the problem in counseling service. So as a part of JED Campus, we're really looking at a comprehensive approach where it is the entire um, campus community that is involved. And so schools are open and they're aware and there's increased collaboration and problem solving. And so this idea of it's everyone's responsibility, not just counseling services, um, that's what we're seeing is working best on campus. Yeah, a lot of people don't consider this is the first time people, these young individuals are off on their own per se. I mean, they're, they're going to find the person that's um, the hits closest to them, whether it's a staffer or it's a professor or whether it's a, an RA or TA or something like that. Uh, so definitely the holistic approach uh, must be showing more success for these schools. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, the person who sees this, this young person the most, they recognize that, you know, something's not the same or they're not coming to the club anymore. Or they're not coming out of their dorm room. And so if everyone is trained to be able to identify a student who's in distress and to be able to see if someone needs help. So the Jed Foundation really looks to developing those life skills so students can manage some of those competing demands on campus, but also increase help seeking, increase and in promoting connectedness on campus because when you belong then things feel a little different. And what about the data? So uh, there's a report linked in there that was partnered with Health and Human Services. I mean w what are some ways that we're able to look at the data and what's working or not working? So the most amazing thing I think about our impact report is that this is represents 10 years of data collection. And so as a part of JED Campus, we guide schools through this collaborative process that really starts with data and ends with data. So um, in this report, we have um, over 100,000 student voices represented. Um, and so we saw real improvements um, across the board um, 
related to students' um, feelings of change. So we saw decreases in depression and anxiety. Um, we saw increased awareness of mental health resources. Really astoundingly, we saw improved graduation and retention rates. Um, but we also saw a 10% reduction in suicidal ideation, a 13% reduction in suicidal planning, and astounding 25% reduction in suicide attempts, demonstrating that there are real concrete things that schools can do uh, to do improvement across the board for a student mental health. So if you're a student who's experiencing mental health, either stress, severe issues, anything, I mean, it grows a whole spectrum. I mean, we say mental health disorders. I'd imagine people think, oh, we're talking clinical depression, things like that. No, it goes, it goes much deeper than that. If you if you feel like you don't belong in, in the community, if you feel like you have nowhere to turn to, A, it's going to hurt for retention. So it's definitely from an institutional perspective, something uh, the administration should keep in mind. Um, it, but also just in general, you want to make sure your students are happy and enjoying the, the, the time they're spending there. What are some ways that students should seek help? Absolutely. And I do think that what you had said is super important, which is if you increase belongingness and you increase community, it, it follows that you increase retention and graduation. Um, and that's important now because re graduation and retention rates are going down. So improvements um, as related to what we've seen in our report is really, really important. Um, I think for students who are struggling, and to your point, it's not just those that have a diagnosed mental health condition, but when you go to a new place and you are having a hard time, it, it is very isolating. And so the first thing that we ask um, for people to do here at JED is to reach out for help. You're not alone. Lots of people are struggling and lots of people want to help. Um, so we encourage calling 988 um, um, which is the suicide line the or the crisis text line, uh, 741741. Um, talk to your friends, you know, talk to a trusted adult, talk to family, but being able to reach out for help is critically important. Yeah, definitely. And when we talk about the kind of holistic way of doing it, I mean, what are some ways that either classmates, teachers, uh, parents for that matter, should get involved to make sure that their student is in a good place emotionally? Yeah, you know, one of the things that the JED campus and our larger JED foundation really focuses on is help seeking and help giving. And if you folks are interested in finding more resources, um, you can go to jedfoundation.org. We have a tremendous amount of resources related to, you know, how do you talk to a friend that's struggling? You know, how do you take... Um, take advantage of opportunities when you're like, are you all right? So sometimes it's other people reaching out um, to say like, hey, can I be helpful? So I think that there is something about a young person reaching out for help, but also for a friend or a family member um, to reach out. So, you know, I think the question about what are the larger things that we can do um, is campus and university should really focus on a comprehensive approach so that their entire campus is trained and aware um, so that it's not just the person who's struggling that's reaching out, but that there are other mechanisms in place that can identify a student that is struggling and get them to the place where they need to be. The nature of your organization, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but it, are there any examples of success stories of institutions doing the right thing and implementing programs? Oh, absolutely. Um, we have a ton of examples of that. And I think if people are interested in seeing more of the snippets related to what schools are doing as good examples, um, we can go to jedfoundation.org to the impact report. And they, we have some campus spotlights of, oh, you know, in, implementing um, like how you can help programs or identifying students at risk or even mental health campaigns to get students aware um, of what's happening on campus. Like um, we had an interview recently with the president of student government that they brought out therapy dogs and that got students out on campus to learn about resources. Everyone comes out for a dog, but the, in the intention was to then find out about the resources on campus and connect with people that look like you, that felt like you. Um, so there we have tons of examples of that.
Yeah, and I'll bring up personally too from my my time working higher ed and as a student. No, I've got my undergrad. Uh, is anytime pizza is being served, take advantage of it. It's more you're there for more than just pizza. So so please please have have a meal, have have some uh, some time with some meet some new people, get out get out of the dorm and learn and meet new people. And it, it's holistically better for everyone if everyone is able to come together as a community. And uh, I'll reinforce also, especially in New Hampshire, the nine eight eight number is available to call. We have, New Hampshire has implemented a lot of programs. NAMI New Hampshire has been a part of that. Uh, so please, please take advantage of resources on your college campus. Uh, whether you're an online student, I mean, a lot of these, especially the university systems, have taken advantage of these resources for the online students also who may never even see campus, but those resources are there for them also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good points. Judd Foundation recommends. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the Jed Foundation recommends reaching out um, to 988 to the crisis text line 741741, especially for online students who, where people may not be seeing eyes on, um, but being able to see if people are signing on or, you know, coming to class. So there are real recommendations for online courses for online schools to in-person universities. So jedfoundation.org, it's J-E-D foundation.org. Definitely give them a look. And I'll put in the episode description a link to their uh, campus impact report 2024. It was reinforced. Check out the data, see what's working and not working. It seems like everyone agrees. We want to make sure our college students are enjoying their time and are in good mental health while they're on and away from campus. Thank you so much for Dr. Michelle Mullen, Senior VP and Chief Design and Impact Officer at Jed Foundation for joining me today. Thanks for having me. NewEnglandTake.com to get more like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.